Hey, what's up guys? This is the Mesh Force M3. I'm gonna unbox this thing, I'm gonna do some speed tests and range tests, so stick around to the end to find out all those numbers. This is a budget mesh Wi-Fi system. So what's a mesh Wi-Fi? Well, a mesh Wi-Fi is designed to replace your router because actually each one of these are routers. However, only one of them that's hooked up to your modem acts as the router, the other two act as nodes. So mesh Wi-Fi is designed to get rid of Wi-Fi dead zones, and you could see that here. So if I take my Wi-Fi device and I connect to my Wi-Fi name or SSID, and I'm closer to this room, it will automatically connect me to this device. If I'm closer to this one, it'll connect me here, or it'll connect me there if I'm closer to the other one. And as I walk around my home, it will switch to ensure I have good Wi-Fi coverage. So that's really what all mesh Wi-Fi's do. This is a Wi-Fi 5 device or wireless AC. However, it is compatible with Wi-Fi 6 as well, but this being a budget system, it doesn't have the fastest speed rating. So it's an AC 1200, it's a dual band system. I don't expect this to do amazing on wireless backhaul. It should be okay for wired backhaul. But again, if you have very fast internets like gigabit or anything like that, I would recommend getting the higher end versions. So this is really designed to increase Wi-Fi coverage and give you uh, decent speeds. But again, I'll do all the speed tests and we'll find out. So you get some instructions, register, how to connect and stuff. And let's just look at the units itself. So the good thing is that it does support gigabit and each one has two ethernet ports on it. So they're both gigabit ports, so if you're wiring anything via ethernet, you will get you know up to gigabit speeds, which is a good thing. However, over Wi-Fi, we'll find out. So power to ethernet ports, looks like this is your WAN, and that looks like a factory reset. So the same would be, yeah, the same is true for the other ones. I'll just show you the second one. It's essentially the same thing, which also means that you can connect any one of these as your main router. And you have your power cords, and the power cords are 100 to 240 volts, so it should work in pretty much any place I can think of. And you do get an Ethernet cable. Doesn't say if it's Cat 5e or Cat 6. It's been over two weeks since I've unboxed this thing. I've been using it, and there have been zero drops, which is always a good sign. However, the switching speed between nodes is a bit slower than what I'm used to. So typically when you have your Wi-Fi device, you're connected to one when you walk throughout your home and you're closer to the other one, it's supposed to automatically switch you, which this does, which all mesh Wi-Fi's do. However, in this case, it does take a bit longer. So up to about two minutes sometimes, which was a bit slower than what I was anticipating. All right, so I have all my speed tests, range tests, all that other stuff, wired, wireless, backhaul, everything. Let's jump straight in. Starting with the internet speed test, this is where I use the speed test app on my phone, which goes to a public speed test server and it does the speed test. So with speedtest.net, because I'm using the internet, I'm limited by my internet service provider. So my speeds I'll put right here and here are the results. I got 476 megabits per second down and 292 megabits per second up. Now do keep in mind that this is a budget mesh Wi-Fi system and this is using Wi-Fi 5 or wireless AC. So it doesn't have Wi-Fi 6. Then I did local area speed tests and what this does is it isolates the router. So for example, I have the router, my computer becomes my speed test server. So what I do is I go from phone to router to computer and this isolates the router because I'm no longer relying on the internet, no longer relying on the public speed test server, which you know a lot of people are using at the same time or can be. So typically with all the mesh Wi-Fi's that I've tested, usually the speeds increase, both download and upload speeds. However, I did notice something weird where the upload speed increased by a good amount. However, the download speed decreased. Now, at first I thought, okay, it was my computer, let me restart it, and it was I was still getting the same speeds. I used other devices, I was still getting the same speeds, other Wi-Fi devices to do the speed test. And then I hooked up my Asus ET8, then I hooked up the Netgear Orbi, and with those I got you know, the fast speeds that I was expecting. So I'm not quite sure what happened there, but I'm just gonna report the numbers that I got. But because there was a bit of an oddity here, why the download speed was so much slower, 
I did also do a public speed test, speedtest.net, with the same placement. So let's jump straight in. Now staying consistent with all my other Mesh Wi-Fi videos, I'm gonna use the same option numbering scheme, starting with option one, and that's when you use a router by itself. So just because you have a Mesh Wi-Fi doesn't actually mean you need to use more than one. You could just use one by itself. So in that case, you have your two ethernet ports, you hook up the globe one to the internet, and if you want to hook up more devices, you would hook it up to the one with the arrows or the left and right carrots. So essentially, and if you needed more ports, you would hook up the one with the carrots to an uh, unmanaged switch, which should expand your ethernet ports. I get 220 down and 520 up. Now again, I don't know why the download speed dropped so much, but the upload speed was what I was expecting, so much faster. Now with the same speed test, this was the internet speed test that I did, so you see the numbers there. Skipping option two, because option two is when I connect a router to a dedicated non-router device. In this case, all three of these are technically routers, even though in the same network, only one of them is acting as the router. Going to option three, that's called wired backhaul. Now wired backhaul is when you hook up both of these to each other via ethernet. So this is your main one that's hooked up to your modem with the globe, and then from the left and right carrots or the arrows, you basically take an ethernet and bring it all the way to the globe of the other one. And this ensures you have a very strong signal at both nodes. So this is what I typically use at home. If you can do wired backhaul, I always recommend it. I get essentially very similar speeds on the secondary node when I'm doing the speed test. And again, both for local area speed test and with the public speed test. Now moving to option four, that's called wireless backhaul. Now wireless backhaul is exactly the same thing as wired backhaul except you remove the wire. So what you do is you still have this one hooked up to your modem via ethernet and then you hook this up maybe one or two rooms away to a power and then it automatically connects to this one and you have what's known as wireless backhaul. And if you guys are wondering, you can mix wired and wireless backhaul. So because we have three here, for example, these two could be wired and you know this one could be wireless connecting to these. So you couldn't mix and match. We get 208 down, 152 up, and for the internet speed test, we get 184 down and 125 up. Now the reason why this drops so much is because this is a dual band system. So typically dual bands usually suffer in wireless backhaul mode. That's because they don't have that additional band where they could basically talk to it on that dedicated band or mix and match a combination of them. Jumping to range test. Now range will vary based on location because it really depends, you know, if you have thick walls, if you have a lot of walls, if you're between floors, if you're in a building with a lot of other interference, like a lot of other routers around. So all that stuff can hurt your range. Now I'm currently in a more, typically a little bit more open area. So I typically get a little more range now than I used to in the past. Jumping straight in, 20 feet away, we get 186 down, 400 up, and 466 down, 213 up with the internet speed test. Now at 50 feet away, this is when I go outside, so there is you know, definitely a decrease in speeds because now there are stucco walls that are blocking the signal. And then at 100 feet away, I cross the street, I get up to about 140 feet and the signal is about to cut out. So essentially it's cutting out, cutting back in. Now getting into the Mesh Force app, it's a normal app, you know, nothing fancy. It does the job, it didn't crash or anything like that. It gives you enough customizations, nothing too crazy. Just normal, everything was good. Now is it worth getting these, why or why not? Well, I think this budget system is designed for internet speeds of up to 400 megabits per second and it will do a lot better in wired backhaul versus wireless backhauls. Typically for wireless backhaul, I recommend going the tri-band or now the new quad band. So in dual band systems like this one, typically, as you guys saw from the speed test, you know, the secondary nodes, third ones, they're gonna suffer some Wi-Fi speeds. So that might not be as important to you if let's just say you're putting one in the garage and you're hooking up to like a ring camera or something that really doesn't need that much speed, then that's fine, but just as a heads up. But considering the price, and considering you get three nodes, considering they all have ethernet ports, considering you get decent range, it's nothing amazing, but, and it's solid from what I personally saw, so there were no drops or any abnormalities or anything like that. Well, there was, the switching speed is also a bit slow. Again, I noted that earlier. But again, considering the price, I think it's at least worth checking out. 
If you guys enjoyed this video, smash that subscribe button. I have a whole bunch of other Mesh Wi-Fi videos coming up. So hit the bell for the notifications as well, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.